peace, family. It's Brother Rich, Underground Railroad. We back, red and blue pill in the house. Uh, got a lot of things going on right now. Could you um just hold the papers? I want for those living outside of New York City. It, this is this is just continuing with the NYPD every day. The NYPD's on the uh, front page of the paper. So I want to kind of talk to Red and Blue Pill about what's been going on with, uh, oh, there goes another one, the chief. Uh, for those that don't know, well, Red and Blue, let me just, um, you know, they say NYPD's on a, on, on a vacation while they're working. They just decided they're not going to work no more. They decided they're not going to arrest people no more. They don't want to hand out tickets no more. Um, they turn their back on the mayor. They, they're just, they wilding out right now. They're not patrolling the streets like they used to. So, and I mean, Blue touched on this briefly, but the shit won't stop. They just keep going. Pat Lynch, the dude that's the head of the PBA right there, he wants the mayor to apologize to him. I mean, it's all types of shits going on. Um, just try to try to let me know what's because there's so much going on with this. Then you got the thing going on in Paris. But just to start out with what's going on in New York, um, what's going on with the NYPD, y'all? Uh, please explain to me what's going on from your uh, research. Yeah. Pat Lynch is causing a stench amongst the NYPD ranks. Now they have dissension in the ranks where there are people that actually, uh, you know, are going against his, uh, his command of quote-unquote rank and file. Only 4% of the officers in his union, which doesn't represent all of the quote-unquote uh, officers or policy enforcers at NYPD, not all of them have agreed to his propaganda campaigns. They didn't sign on to his um, petition and things of this particular nature. So at a time like this, when they feel that they have de Blasio on the ropes, they want to get what union bosses are responsible for, and that's a new contract, you know what I'm saying? So they want new cars, they want better vests, they want more officers, you know, they want certain salaries to be uh, implemented, you know, uh, beginning salaries and things of that nature. So there's infighting, okay, because there's a power struggle, whereas he's doing the bidding for, you know, re Republicans, the Republican, the, uh, yeah, the oligarchs and, and, and the Republican parties that are utilizing him, you know, as a, um, as a barking dog. You feel me? To play this political chess with de Blasio at this particular time. And we see the results of that coming out today in a report that de Blasio is threatening to veto any bill that comes from the city council criminalizing illegal chokeholds. They said that after NYPD had an internal investigation, right, they brought somebody in and um, they did an internal investigation and a brother, you know what I'm saying, he said that the chokeholds were inappropriate. He cited 10 cases over, I believe, a five-year span or something like that. And they're like, it's only 10 cases. Listen, all right? Listen, like, as somebody who experienced those particular horrors, you know, one is too many. You feel me? Eric Gardner was too many. So if an officer's immediate response to subdue a person, not even necessarily a threat, because Eric Gardner wasn't threatening them, I wasn't threatening them, you know what I'm saying? Other people who have been subdued in this particular fashion haven't threatened them, all right? They were um, enforcing this particular code, this quality of life code, where even disorderly conduct, which is not a charge, it's not a crime, even that is to be answered and meted out with that level of punishment where their first response is a chokehold. So the department is saying that's not sanctioned, that's illegal, but then they're not giving the legal recourse for you to go into courts and get some actual charges pulled on them officers if they do use it, you feel me? Whether you end up bodied or not, they're saying that it's not a crime, it's not criminal. So they're only putting the remedy in a civil uh, uh, venue, you know what I'm saying? And they won't bring it into a criminal venue. They won't charge these officers. So even while he's on the ropes, you feel me? Even while he's under fire, okay? It seems that the closed door meeting that Pat Lynch had with the, uh, the union bosses and the mayor uh, a few days ago, you feel me? This is how they're finagling him 
you know, and playing uh, political puppeteers. All right. So there's a Geppetto somewhere. Yeah, there's a Geppetto somewhere, you know, with a, with a major grand chessboard. And our babies is the pawns. You feel me? Our babies is the pawns of this political chess game. So you have this particular policy where they're saying the NYPD has slowed down their arrests and things of that nature. That's a holiday for, quote unquote, so-called black and brown people in New York City. You feel me? Because it's not like the crime shot up because they slowed down. And they're also making something very clear to you that this is a corporation. This is a municipality, and the city is run off of the infractions on the back of not the middle class, not the upper class, but the lower, the lowest rungs. All right, they are the recipients of quality and life infractions which are statistically and categorically not crimes. There's no bodies involved, you feel me? There's no laws, there's no injured parties, there's nothing that supports that. All right. This is a, a creation of a policy that was implemented in um, the 70s and things of that particular nature. All right. So we're going to talk about the broken window theory and all of these, uh, you know, um, psychological. Again, we're talking about this whole aspect of the psychology, this whole psychological uh, plan that was put together, you know, with criminologists and, and what have you to say. All right. Yeah. It's social engineering. You feel me? So we're going to get to the crust of this to bring some light to this particular topic, to give the family the ear so they can hear exactly what's being told to you when they're having these squabbles over their right to either kick your ass or not, of which they have no rights. Everything that he said. The irony in the paper today, the front page, uh, we want we want protection, not an apology. If that ain't this, a slapping in the face to every black, brown person that lives not only in New York City, but all over the world, the NYPD for years, the things they have done to people, from plunges in the ass to shooting brothers 50 times, they want protection? What the hell they think we want? What does that? I mean, this is this is this this is like this is some this is like you ever seen the movie? What's Idiocracy? It's like, do they really think we this dumb? We can't we can't be this dumb. What is that saying? What what is what is that right there? We want protection, not an apology. That's what the hell we asking for. We want protection. What is that saying to? What, to the people of the city, how should we respond by seeing not overt racism, not covert, I mean, but overt. This shit is overtly in our face. How should we properly respond without being reactionary? Again, we have to look at it through a proper lens to understand that this is media manipulation and propaganda at its finest. So we're dealing with people that are now dealing with the Hegelian dialect. Not now, but it's so obvious that it's out in the open of which, yeah, they have reversed the curse. You know what I'm saying? So your grievances are no longer grievances that are warranted to be heard in the venue of which compassion is to be laid on you because they snatched that from you with their loss. And then it was exasperated by the uh, attacks in France. So if your security force is subliminally telling you, right, the people that are responsible for your security, or so I'm talking about the people out there that actually believe that's what policy enforcers do. You know what I'm saying? And as Automatic said, don't overstand or look at them through the frame, to, to the lens and the frames of which they should be looked upon as slave catchers. All right? Okay. Because again, we're dealing with we're dealing with empire. We're dealing with a corporation here, and they're arguing over who gets dibs on you, and they're telling you that hmm? the spoils of war, the booty. These are the gentries of Rome saying, "Look, man, this is how we pay Caesar: taxing their backs." You feel me? So we've slowed it down so the, the city is going to be crippled by their lack of business of taxing its citizenry or the lower rungs of it for, for traffic infractions, for quality of life infraction. I'll read a few of what exactly categorically in this city is considered quality of life infractions. And then you can see who is the, uh, 
you know, who's the target in these particular campaigns? Like, you know what I'm saying? Why would they make something such as this, which criminalizes a particular way, you know, that people live their lives? Yes. So quality of life infractions include, but are not limited to, sleeping on the train, all right? So you live in a city where one job is just not enough. You live in a city where people often got to put in two or three jobs. This is what New York City's about. You don't got the right to come here and do your thing, then where do you have the right to do it at? This is where people, right, actualize that dream. So let's say my, my you know, my mother's working two or three jobs. Let's say my father's working three or four jobs. And he's, you know, he got to get that nap on the train. He has to recharge his battery. He got 15-minute power naps between these gigs to put that food on the table to provide better family, to keep the community intact so broken windows and all of these other policies don't kick in because they are, everything begins and ends in the home. All right? Right in between cars. You feel me? Wearing your pants low. Two finger rings. They just locked the dude up for a two finger ring in Union Square. Occupying two seats of the train, putting your feet on a subway seat, putting your backpack on an empty seat, using a swipey at the toll booth, asking for handouts while opening doors, asking for a swipey from somebody else, standing in front of a door of a lobby of your own building. <laughs> Insisting on your rights when stopped for no reason. So even questioning the Gestapo to say, what am I being stopped for? You could be hit with disorderly conduct and lined up for an infraction. Filming while not interfering with police activity. Being a pedigab driver or parking in an unauthorized zone or not displaying your rates. Jaywalking, begging, riding your bicycle on the sidewalk. And this summation does not account for driving or walking while so-called black, stop and frisk, civil forfeiture laws for confiscation of property, vertical patrols up and down the peas, all right? And mistreatment behind the wall. So another major story came out to say it was the most mistreatment in Rikers Island ever. And if anybody been to the island, if anybody lived through New York City in the 90s, how can that shit be worse? So what's going on behind the wall that we don't get a chance to talk about? How are we forgetting our brothers and sisters behind the wall? You know what I'm saying? The unit is one. There's no separation. You feel me? So all of these things are happening and they're signaling, you know, these racket balls to say, look, man, these people don't know their, they don't know their quote unquote rights. They don't know the law. They don't know what they up against. They still sleep. You know what I'm saying? So why not bring the bulldozer out at this particular point? Why not go all in? We got them on the ropes. You know what we're pushing for, but some of us are still confused. You know what I'm saying? We actually don't think that that's what they're pushing for. So when I see shenanigans like this, like I said, it's propaganda campaigns to reverse the public dialogue. You know what I'm saying? It's sympathy campaigns because, yeah, capture the hearts and minds. Soon it's going to be a checklist. Either you are with us. Or you're against us. Bottom line. I mean, even at this point, you know, after the after the two police got murked, you know what I mean, and and they, you know, magically reversed public sentiments towards their case. You know, the new shit is they'll hit you with the with the look. Like if you don't give them the the, the double nod, the Heineken double nod, you feel me? They start acting like they want to move on you. Hit them with the raised eyebrow, like. Yeah, if you if you if you if you mean mug them or if you ice grilling them, they looking at you like they ready to you know what I'm saying like make a move. You got to give them that you got to give them that scary nod like nah I see you. Or, or I've already heard two or three stories of people saying that they've been drawn down upon. You know what I'm saying the police hopped out with their biscuits, running up to see if they flinch. All of that they out here playing games. So you know. My thing is, if you experience, once again, if you experience a 90 cent, a 90% drop in quote unquote arrests and the crime rates don't go up, 
What is that telling you? That these communities are being over police. That they're going into communities with fine tooth combs and they're looking for infractions that are part of people's lifestyle. You know, you feel me? Yeah. It's part of the way that they uh, culturally express themselves, even if it might be asking for change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How could, they, how, could they, how could they justify an increase in the police force and crime is at an all-time low in New York City before the slowdown? Murders at an all-time low before the slowdown. They don't tell you that. They, they're not talking about that fact. You, you feel what I'm saying? They don't even want to talk about black on black, but they're not talking about the fact that... That a lot of black people stop killing each other in New York like that. This, this, you know, this is at an all-time, all-time low when it comes to crime in the city. And then with the slowdown, it really, you know, it com like Blue said, it completely slowed their numbers down. So it takes the argument off, off the table of them, you know... You want new, more police for what? You need to start getting rid of some of these niggas. Let's start with all of them old Irish and Italian, the old arm, the old Gestapo. Get them out of there. The brothers and the sisters and the Hispanics and things of that so-called, they're the part of the force. You know, the, the, you know let them rock, if that's what it is. The people who are familiar, who come from these neighborhoods that they're policing, who look like the individuals that they're policing put Europeans and people of European descent if they come if they're Russian American or if they're Italian American put them in the neighborhoods that are predominantly of those backgrounds and nationalities and put our our brothers and sisters in our precincts that match the nationality it only makes sense with everything that's going on right now in the city uh, you notice What's his name? Um, Blinch, Giuliani, Pat Lynch, Giuliani. The main people they want to blame for all everything that's going on right now is the protesters. So they say, you know, the protesters, they want to blame Al Sharpton, they want to pay Barack Obama, they want to blame, you know, just about anybody who doesn't say it's okay to kill these niggas whenever, you, whenever and wh whatever you want to. So, yeah, Eric Holder. Top cop in the land. So, um... How much of this, what's going on right now, with the police basically saying fuck you, Pat Lynch basically saying fuck you to the mayor, how much of this do you think this is a message to the, maybe to those white protesters that seem sympathetic, somewhat sympathetic to the Black Lives Matter uh, movement? Me and Blue was out there on several occasions during the protest and the numbers were just, it was, it, was, it was huge, a lot, it was massive. And I know it had to be a shock to some of them white officers to see their own white kind, what they might deem turn their back on them. It hurt their hearts, it hurt their hearts. yes, it hurt their hearts. To see upside down American flags, Black Lives Matter sign, stop killing black people, da da da. I'm sure that had an impact on their psyche. Just like us seeing black people turn on ourselves had an impact on our psyche our whole lives. How much of this what's going on right now is a message to those, it ain't worth it, leave them niggas alone. This shit ain't worth it, y'all. This city will go down the drain if y'all keep defending these niggas. Hmm. Very interesting question. Well, one thing that I want to bring up is the evaporation rate of those protesters. I would say what protesters? Ghostbusters. They hit him with you the echoplasm. They hit him with the Will Smith with the with the MIB shit. Yeah. Like you didn't even see this. Like this never happened. Well, they because they bust him to France. Yeah. Yeah, they air bust him over to that rally because he went from fifty thousand one weekend, then the next weekend, well, homie put in that work. That was half a million. Yeah, that was half a million, damn near one weekend. Then the next weekend, homie put in the work, or they put in that work and put it on homie. And after that, what protests? What die in? What hands up don't shoot? What, you don't hear nothing. The only protests that are taking place is on the front page of the New York Daily News and the Post now. Those are the only arguments. The rest of New York has carried on with their lives. The motherfucking ball drop. They did the top 10 of 2014 shit and erased it. Yeah, they they reset their books. Thinking. Yeah, none of the top 10s had anything to do with what was going on. They reset their clocks and their fiscal year started again and it's back to business. So, you know, 
going back to what our brother Sarah Suit and Seti said on the um, show that you and him did on your channel, he was like, you know, since when did they start caring about you? Why they not protesting niggas killing each other in the hood? Why wasn't they protesting the other 80,000 times that one of ours got bodied? They got out there because the media told them to get out there. Social and mainstream. You feel me? They got galvanized through Twitter hashtags and stuff of that nature. You know, um, always have to keep in context the New York City that we're talking about, that we're living in. These are regentrifiers that have occupied the city through an economic program, through a social entrepreneurship program, through policy, through, um, through uh, NGOs and things of that nature. You know, they get grants to come into Best Eye and, 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 and observe the monkeys. You feel me? In the concrete zoo. Like how they go to Africa and get grants to go over there and feed them Moringa and, and, and bring them, you know, uh, 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 malaria blankets and whatnot. They get the same checks to go to Best Star. They get the same checks to go to Compton. They get the same checks. It's called social entrepreneurship and they're social venture capitalists that cut big checks for that. Do your research. How's a nigga from Wisconsin living in Best Star on Gates? Like, where did he find that at? Why, how was, it, how was somebody from Arkansas living on 127th and Lenox doing what? They getting paid for that. They anthropologists. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's money involved. So, you know, a lot of stuff was be, was done for face. You know what I mean? Niggas was taking selfies and all of that. You know, I don't see the sincerity in that whole March, because like I said, they didn't march to a black owned store in Harlem and buy them out. They didn't march to no uh, black owned business in, in Brooklyn and buy them out. They wasn't talking about supporting our own. This was a holiday season. You feel me? They wasn't talking about, you know, they wasn't talking about empowering the youth because we, we are currently in Silicon Alley, what New York City is called. They wasn't talking about teaching the youth how to code. They wasn't implementing none of that. They just was out there building up sentiments and mentally, right? Because we all, I don't want to get too far, but in this mental, in this mental, in this matrix where all is mental, you got a whole bunch of people running around with picket signs telling you that, you know, don't shoot and dying and shit, laying down and whatnot, putting your mind and your energy into a, and your feel of resonance into a, into a feel of despair. The oscillation was that of a negative one. They were furthering, they were just furthering, they, yeah, and you was asking for mercy. They were just furthering our negative experiences. There wasn't too much positivity that was emanating from those crowds of people. There wasn't nothing empowering. There was no strength. There wasn't nothing strength-wise coming out of that. And then when some work got put in, everybody went, was scared to come out. So we're not looking for that kind of camaraderie. We're not looking for that kind of sympathetic appeal from anybody at the end of the day. That's, that, that, that's some weak shit. You understand what I'm saying? We're looking for strength. We're looking for some power. We're looking for solutions. I don't care if it's 10 people marching. I'd rather 10 lions than 100 sheep. Indeed, so, you know, it was just a reversal. Like I said, it was propaganda, it was a spell, and it was promoted by a, you know, a juxtaposition of, 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 of care, of heart, you know what I mean? Like, damn. Like, all black lives matter. I don't got enough heart in my heart for these officers. Let me get a little bit out of this out and, you know, pick up this compassion. And they just, they continue with it, and then they went straight into France. You feel me? So now the hashtag campaigns got replaced with I am Charlie. You understand? Yeah, that's the new. But listen to the difference in invocations. Listen to the difference, you know what I'm saying? And how they're using the affirmative as the I am. They're using that I am, right? That great supreme force. Mm -hmm. I am Charlie. That's an affirmation. The anagram for Charlie in Hebrew is the same for the same, it's the same word for Israel. You understand? So I'm not gonna get into the fact that, you know, this may have been a Massar black flag operation. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, but we, 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 yeah, you know, the, yeah, the, the, the recurring, they can't, they can't give you no proof whatsoever. They just was like, yo, the brothers did it. To be honest with you, hold on, hold on. but again, like I said, if you live in life where you're reading these stories singularly and you're not connecting the dots and you don't understand that all of this is connected to a meme, mm -hmm. thank God for the law 44 that I'm allowed by the universe to just follow the signal to say, okay, it's 44 there, I'm gonna follow through. So the, the newspaper, Charlie's been around for 44 years, Google it. And then 44 world leaders showed up to march with 1.3 million in Paris, but overall 4 million marched in France. And then you got, you know what I'm saying, Netanyahu and all of them straddling the front. And if, and if anybody's been following the Law 44 narrative, we speak about those four blood moons and how Israel has been cooking up this plot, you feel me, to put that work in on this particular level. They got to hit all of these nodes, you know what I'm saying? They got to line everything up. It's a chessboard. So I just see the game of chess. I see it all connected. I see the, the same mysterious assassin drops ID in the back seat of a car bullshit. I see clean murder scenes. You know what I'm saying? Cleanest. <laughs> the cleanest. I see the cleanest murder scenes on record, even cleaner than Brooklyn. You feel me? Blood out. Yeah, like. I could read. Like, Come on, man. we all melanated, you know, Elohims. I could read algorithms of my people. Them two gunmen wasn't melanated. I don't care what nobody say. I could just tell by the way that they move, and I don't care if it's niggas in Paris. You understand what I'm saying? They didn't move like no brothers. So they, they don't, they don't, you never hear from the brothers. You never even seen a tweet from the brothers. You never, you, you only get what the media told you about the brothers because one of them dropped their ID. I've been on many stings. I've been on many, you know, operations, ops in my life. I've been on a lot of things, bro. One thing that I would never do <laughs> is bring my ID along with me, bro. I, I, I'm familiar. I know about the dark internet. Like, yeah, like, I know about the dark uh, web. I know that you could get all I know about the swipers. I know how easy it is to get IDs these days. Stop yeah. it, Five. Let's just solidify the point that you're making because we're talking about professionals. Let's not act like we're not talking about some professionals. You feel me? The way that they put that work in, you know, the, 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 the whole trajectory, the way that they was, you know, um, flanking one another and, and had, you know, everything about them spoke that this was, this was like, you know, expert marksmen, assassins. So an assassin gonna bring his ID with him? Like you falling for that? You caught up in emotionalism to the degree? I'm talking about one of the supposed um, assassins or murderers or terrorists, you know, in the French massacre, all right, or the, the, the you know, the French ordeal, I'll call it that, because what happened in Nigeria was a massacre. Shout out to the family out there, all right? So this particular situation where the um, armed gunmen ran up in the office of a French satirical magazine who was making fun of the Prophet Muhammad, and they also sent a tweet out, right, that day with the new cover of the, of the magazine that they were coming out with, and this particular um, magazine was making fun of Muhammad and saying that, you know, the, the cartoonists were saying, they ain't hit us yet. And then the quote unquote terrorists were saying, or, oh, you know, we got to the end of January to strike. And right after the tweet goes out, right? Just like right after the boy in Brooklyn sends a tweet and fucking Baltimore sends a tweet to New York to say that he's there even though they're telling you they're following him. Yeah, facts. But they're following him while he's on the bus. Okay? Hit for hit, beat for beat, post for post. They know all that. But a minute after they send the facts, then these motherfuckers get clipped. You gonna see this shit in Hollywood before the, like, maybe before the years out. It's a bad, it's a bad film in Hollywood. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not even a, B, it's a B movie. So, somebody sends a tweet. They tweeting from the bus. And they, 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 they if you, if you tweeting from a bus, and there's so many buses to go out. You know, bus schedules? They tell you what time the bus arrives and when it leaves. Yeah. The shit is so automated nowadays, they got apps. 
and it'd be right on time. Yeah, yeah. Like in a train station, it tell you the four train is coming in four minutes. It comes in four minutes. So you come, you you mean to tell me if he's tweeting that he's gonna kill the police, and they send a fax? He's tweeting on the second tweets, and they who sends faxes? They sent the fax. Is this is this usual suspects with Kaiser so say? You're sending a fax, so you didn't intercept the bus. You said that the minute the fax came in at at 2:34, he killed the police at 2:35. Now I told you before that the operations, the um, the NYPD, the St. Louis police department and other police departments were trained by Mossad, right? They were all trained by Mossad, by the, yeah, by the Israeli military on urban, on, on how to deal with homeland terrorism because of the expertise that they have in, in oppressing, yeah, in oppressing the Palestinians, the, uh, and, you know, for, 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 for many decades and whatnot. They're proficient with their killing game, and they're proficient with their brutality. All of the stuff that you're seeing, the chokehold, women getting duffed out, children getting bodied and all of that, all of that has been perfected by the Israeli Defense Forces. Now, they train all of these police departments, you see the uptick in violence, right? Remember, and we, we're talking about the Empire State, we're talking about Israeli interests. So now, then you get a situation where nobody talks about this, but they bodied homie in the, in the, in the, in the synagogue. Right? The black dude with the knife. Remember that? Right around the time of the protest, a black dude with the knife, and he stabbed up one of the Israeli dudes, and they bodied him in the synagogue, but they swept that under the rug. Yeah, and it was footage on that and all of that. So the Paris thing pops off, right? Because remember, we're still dealing with criminalizing melanated men and women on a global scale, like we told you before, and implementing you as the homeland terror threat. We covered that in the last video. We're talking about the fact that they are creating an environment and a narrative to make you the homeland threat. If they put your name out there, if they put your pitch out there, if they put your video out there and said that he did it, if they catch, if they'll body one of their own and be like, he did it, no trial, no lawyers, no Alton Maddox, no Cochran, death on contact. You understand what I'm saying? Drone attack. Yeah, TOS, terminate on site. And they tell you that these men put in some work. Then another brother, a heavy, heavily melanated brother, he puts in some work. And his, his own classmates say he couldn't put in the work because he was in class. That's what they said. When they said that this man killed the police, they was like, no, he didn't. He was in class with us. That's what they were saying. So now... No, this is I'm going over in France because I'm, I'm tying the two in because this the all of the reports that are coming out about that being a false flag operation points back to the same culprit that I told you before, Israeli Mossad. And if any work is getting put in on a New York level through the NYPD where they might have bodied their own because we're going back to that whole crime scene, the cleanest crime scene ever. Right. No broken glass. They, they got no video footage whatsoever. They got a tweet homie put out. There's no Wi-Fi in Myrtle and Willoughby train station. I've been in that train station. You can't tweet after you bust a shot. You killed two police and he, they gave chase. So the whole time he was in, the police was in pursuit of him immediately after he quote unquote so-called pulled the trigger. There's no footage whatsoever. If you don't know that area, the P's, the projects are surrounded there. If a nigga yells the wrong way, camera's coming out the window. So you mean to tell me some shots went off? And this was, of course, during a drill. Saturday on a Saturday afternoon in the hood. But it's during an anti-terrorism drill. And then they got a tweet of him. And, and, and they're around the corner, hold on. And they're around the corner with the Hasidics. The Hasidics was in the armory um, putting together a ritual for their holiday season. And they had NYPD security. And it was some private security forces as well. And somebody put a bug in the air. I can't repeat it on on camera, but they was out there doing some major shit in that area. In that whole area, for those that are not familiar with the Brooklyn, that whole area is Hasidic control. That whole area where they killed those two police, that's all Hasidic with the, with the projects right there in that same area, okay? So you have a lot of questions that nobody is willing to even bring up, let alone answer, and none of this shit. Because, because right. So it's all, this so nigga, all he's roaring. Right, he's roaring. Oh, you got blood on your hands. No, Pantaleo has blood on his hands. 
Yeah. Right? Leo got blood Pantaleo on has blood on his hands. That's the, dude That's that the officer that choked out Garner. He got blood on his hands. So this dude is screaming and he takes all the oxygen out of the conversation. So right away, he's indicting the whole community. Oh, Sharpton got blood on his hands. Obama got blood on his Everybody got him and them, but he's telling them, yeah, you know, sign this petition for the funeral and all of that. And he's also telling his, he's telling the citizens to stand behind a illegal NYPD chokehold for the benefit of the doubt because the grand jury, right, operated in the favor of of community, right, by a whole and rule of law and saying this is non-indictable. For whatever reason, we're not gonna get into the legal, legal reasons, the definitions of which, you know, uh, uh, what that particular case meant. It's the signal that is sent, right? And the NYPD is telling the mayor, you can't march in unison or support the citizens of this city even if who voted you in, even by 80%, even if they are pissed off at this repeated abuses of the NYPD, because like I said, anybody who lives here knows that this was the top floor of a skyscraper. This was not the bottom floor incident. Like the shit didn't just start. This is an accumulative process that has been taking place forever. Ever since the NYPD has been in New York City, they have been a occupying force and a terror organization to melanated people in the hood. We know this, all right? Go and look at gangs in New York. That's the nature in which they were created, and they never deviated from that script, all right? So now that they've removed the mob out of New York, they are the mob in New York, and they're using mob rule by way of unions. So if you notice the connection between unions, you know what I'm saying? All of these things that are popping off are dealing with unions. And here we are, even as the conscious community, it's the very thing that we're talking about that we need to, 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 to unify and create is that union. You know what I'm saying? There's no unity. So hold on. Let me just finish this point. So they're telling you that marching is not the proper recourse to get your thing off, you know what I'm saying? For protest, to, to let your voice be heard. And in the same sentence, in the same breath, a few days later, you see one three point million people march in France in protest. And they're telling you that's the protest that we need to support. Why isn't the 44th president in the front line with those other 44 world leaders standing next to fucking baby killers and, and everything else? You feel me? And not to even signal none of them, none of them out. Because if you're going to be a world leader and, and you know what I'm saying, and this particular paradigm, that's what you got to be made of. You got to be a baby killer. So it seems. Or you have to be quiet enough to coddle to the baby killers. Yeah. So you got baby, you got baby killers standing up there with people who probably, in their heart, in their policy, don't support baby killing, but they're not gonna say nothing to these dudes. All right. So on December second, the French Parliament right passed a resolution asking France to recognize Palestine as a state. All right. So, and we also know that Israel was upset with France for its Palestine vote in the UN a few days ago. Okay? And France was also calling for the sanctions to end in Russia. Right? So now all of that is off the table. So in these incidents, you have to say who benefits more. You know what I'm saying? Who's the beneficiaries of this particular situation? Who stands to benefit the most? All right? It definitely can be these quote-unquote terror organizations because now they're saying one dude or one people was with one terror organization that's beefing with another terror organization that this dude is saying he was part of. So all that shit is bullshit. And these individuals were somebody that was on a watch list that they was following. You understand? This was a dude that they already picked up for putting in work. He was trying to release political prisoners on his of shit out there. You feel me? They had known that he had been over training with ISIS or whatnot. So if their security forces are what these security forces uh, present themselves to be at this particular time, you would think that they would have a handle on a situation, you know, if that is even in fact the case. Again, we got a plan to the bullshit just to dissect it and, and explain to you what it is. I don't want to give it no credence by even conversating like it's factual. You know, it's very illusionary. Yeah. And Rudolph Giuliani better not say shit. 
because his Bratton is Bernard Kerr, what, Kerrick, Kerrick? And that nigga's a federal fucking, uh, he's on federal parole right now. He did four or five years for corruption. So the same way that you got Bratton right here with de Blasio, imagine if Bratton went and did five years d during his term for corruption and all kind of other stuff. That's what Giuliani was dealing with with his police chief. And that whole administration was crooked. And so After he finished running his terror campaigns on Rikers Island. After he finished running his terror campaigns on Rikers Island and after Rudolph Giuliani was complicit in 9-11. And, you know, we, we already know what happened there. So, you know, they got the saying, um, head nigga in charge, H-N-I-C. Who's the head cracker in charge? I had a show with Griff and Zaza. We was talking about Jewish control over the media. Um, you know, some people say the Vatican. I heard Phil, Phil Valentine speak of the Vatican and their control over this. Who's behind the, the, the head cracker, behind the cracker, behind the cracker, behind the cracker, watching over this saying, damn, you, you motherfuckers is getting sloppy. Is it the Vatican? Is it the Jews? Is it Israel, the Mossad? We got these names and people say the Jews run everything. Then people say, um, no, it's the Vatican. Then people say, no, it's Britain. And, and the king and queen, the king and queen came over to New, New Jersey. I mean, came, when they came to Brooklyn, they was like, they came to Brooklyn to see what was going on with their property over in Brooklyn. Who's really, from your research, who's really controlling all of this, so-called controlling all of this? White Jesus. <laughs> and there are many hands in the pot. Can't one person control this motherfucking clusterfuck? You know what I'm saying? There are many people that are complicit with keeping the uh, program alive. The church and the crown are complicit in doing what they do. So that bastard and his wife are complicit. That motherfucking Israel, the Mossad, those bastards over there are complicit. The motherfucker, uh, queen. The, the queen and all of her, her, minions. her minions and henchmen. Andrew and his. <laughs> the baby. Yeah, the motherfucking, this, this dude, Andrew, that they covering up with the sex parties and they sex slaves. Like, the whole Europe, the, all of those blue blood, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you know, oligarch, one percenters, the ones who are responsible for a lot of this hell on earth, uh, you know, um, uh, reality and whatnot. You feel what I'm saying? How there's a shithole, we talking about a shit ladder, okay? So we're talking about rungs that continuously go up and up and up, going up. They keep going up, you feel me? So there's so many people that are complicit in a diabolical scheme, you know, to what, either steal birthright, to, to, to tax the sovereign, to keep you enslaved, to suppress you in white supremacy, you know, to make you food for the reptilian. I mean, to, you know... To, to get you to forget that this is your life. Yeah, to, to, take to, 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 to take that argument, to, to, to usurp you for, you know, not only your throne, but your, your, your energy and your output. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many different things that qualify why this devil is acting the way that he is. So, or should I say these uh, diabolical minds, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I don't put them in that place that they don't deserve to be. You feel me? They're not that crafty, they, they're not that powerful, you know what I'm saying? We have to uh, tap into that innate aspect of ourselves where we can see the treachery for what it is. We're still looking at it through rose-colored glasses, and a lot of our people have a romanticism with the system, whether they want to admit it or not, because like I've mentioned before, we are actually looking for remedy through the courts. We are actually looking for justice as if it's going to come from this particular place. So I stress again that we need to have this conversation because if our focus is on legal recourse, then there's certain legalese that we have to understand as Automatics was speaking about this afternoon. We have to be versed in this language. You know what I'm saying? They let's, they let's, yeah, they speak two languages. You know, Umar was here the other night and he made mention of something that made a lot of sense. And he was saying that, you know, we don't have time for the bickering about what to call each other and what to call ourselves, and I agree. But I also know that we can't continue without a conversation being had 
because if we're talking about legalities, if we're talking about lawfulness, if you're talking about you want to retain a level of quote unquote rights and deal with it from a community place, if you're talking about black family, that's a situation and an institution that has to be intact. There has to be some level of stability for you to get that back together or we are going to build that together after we get rid of the devil So, or this diabolical mind, you know what I'm saying? That is presenting himself or packaging himself as such. You ain't that bad. He ain't that. You know, he's a boy. He's a boy. You know what I'm saying? Who will literally be put in check once people detach themselves from this false premise of who and what he is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he is the Wizard of Oz. Fact. And he rules with he rules with fear. He, he rules through fears. False yeah. evidence. False evidence appearing real. He programs reality based off of you paying attention to what the fuck he throws at you. His media, his movies, his education, you know what I'm saying? His TV shows, his ratchetness, his controlled uh, radio stations that they control. So they, they create negative, you know, they, they'll create a negative environment with negative energy, negative resonance fields. And you are entrapped inside of this negative field of all kind of emotions and feelings and thoughts that you hold dear to your heart about who you are and, 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 and how worthy and how wealthy you are and how much you're worth and how much your life is worth and how much your baby's life is worth and how much that baby growing in your stomach's life is worth that you feel that you could just get rid of it on, on, if, if, on any whim that you think at any month. Or if your brother has a pair of sneakers or a coat that you want, you feel that you are so poor, so void of in, in, in ideas or any kind of outlets to create for yourself that you would take that man or that woman's life. And that's the problem that we're having. And the only way that this shit is going to turn around is if this changes and this changes. You got to work on these two. So if you're going to get out of the matrix, you got to really get yourself out of his field of influence, his sphere of influence, that energy field that they're creating every day. When you wake up, you turn the radio on, they got you. When you turn that TV on, they got you. When you go into his stores and eat his food, they got you. You feel what I'm saying? When you go into their motherfucking plantations and their places of business, they got you. White supremacy institutions create the environment that you motherfuckers are oppressed and are creating this environment. You are creating this reality where all of this shit is in the toilets. We are creating this in our minds and in our hearts. We're watching these slave movies, coming out of those slave movies, mentally putting ourselves in, in a point of reference in nowadays time. Nowadays time, you motherfuckers want to celebrate loot. Oh, my part of my French. I'm getting a little worked up. Nobody's a motherfucker out there. You muddy fuckers. No, I'm just playing. We, yeah. But we celebrate Lupita with her Oscar win. Lupita beautiful. Oh, it's Lupita beautiful. Well, that's a beautiful black sister. Ooh, I want to be Lupita. I am Lupita. And Lupita this, Lupita that. No, 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 no. No, I'm literally saying Lupita's beautiful. So Lupita's gorgeous. yeah, her, her. Lupita's a goddess. The role that Lupita played, that they gave her that award for, the award that you celebrated Holly Berry, that she won for, that award that Denzel won, that award for the movie, the 12 years and all of that. We are putting ourselves mentally in a space because if you change your past, you will change your future and affect your present. There's all kind of sorcery taking place. So we got to get our acts together. These police, they're going to do what they're going to do because of the environment that exists. It's not The only way that you're going to change that is changing yourself first and then the environment that you reside within. Oh. Your reality. Which brings up a very interesting situation. And I don't know if we're going to get a chance to fully touch on it tonight. But I want to discuss the comments that Kendrick Lamar made, and I want to talk about the response that was received from Azealia Banks and the, you know, whirlwind that it created, you know, by way of Lupe and, and all of these other people that was touching on it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I, I look forward to that particular conversation because with the brother, with the brother, yeah, what the brother said in essence is you know, somewhat of the same thing. You know, all of these particular situations begin and end at home. 
and I'm not putting blame on anybody in the home. I just want to, yeah. Home starts here. Right. You don't, you don't, yeah, you don't live in the address. You domiciling your body. You know what I'm saying? You domiciling your body. So getting these particular principles together and on our cap will help us realize and understand what the real game is that's being played. They got you in a fucking fiction. They have you in the matrix. We need to understand, you know, the language that's being used and what they're referencing. You might think that they're referencing one thing, they're referencing something else. We got to learn this language. I don't, I'm not caught up in what you're calling yourself at this particular time. You know what I'm saying? I'm your brother, you know? That's what I call myself in regards to, you know, where it comes to the family. You know what I mean? So I'm not caught up in the titles and everything. And if you identify yourself as Negro, black, or colored, we need to work. We need to talk. There's some things I need to share with you. I'm not going to chastise you. I'm not going to criticize you. I want to work with you. But we need to come to an understanding because, you know, if, if that's the front that you want to fight on, you feel me? You're going to need to learn some 52 hand blocks because this is how they're going to knock you down. I'm trying to tell you. You know, so let's sharpen one another's swords so we can really get out on this battlefield and do wonders, do works. You know what I'm saying? Live up to the legacy that was left by these great warriors. These are shoulders that we stand upon. Yeah, that we stand upon. Like the the the, the, the automatics of the world, they have fight in them. John Henry Clark had fight in them. Dr. Ben had fight in them. You know what I'm saying? These 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 was these was a men of of extreme stature and what have you, six foot, eight foot, you feel me? Some of them were diminutive figures, but they had a heart of 10 lions, not a hundred sheep. So they was able to get so many things done. And that's what we have to return to. So we have to overstand as well, this is an internal engagement and it's exasperated by diet and all of those things, as long as you eat out the hand of your oppressor, you know what I'm saying? As long as you accept the things that are coming from that energy field, from the person that you identify as your adversary, that you out your mouth call the devil, how you gonna let the devil feed you? How you gonna let the devil clothe you? How you gonna let the devil house you? You know what I'm saying? Like, where do we go from there? Teach you, you know, tell you what a crime is versus what it isn't. We need the law masters to step up so we can challenge these quality of life infractions. Let's take it all the way to Albany. Let's topple the fucking system. That's what I'm talking about. For the betterment of the law, all right? In honor and respect of the law, let's bring the law back to where it needs to be. That is not a criminal act. That is not worthy of the infractions that now the NYPD is going to be Bearing down on our backs to catch up for the shit that they supposedly missed when there was nothing there to miss to begin with. It's all illusionary. Nobody lost nothing by them not writing tickets, but them losing money from writing tickets. Ain't no fuck, ain't nobody die from that. You feel me? Ain't nobody get jammed up. So we need to cut it out. This is a falsehood. Let's wake up. And as the brother brought up earlier, and I'm going to continue to bring up because the time is right. You know, where's the responsibility of these quote unquote conscious organizations or these conscious groups or these quote unquote conscious leaders? Where you at? And what the hell are you doing at the end of the day? And when are you going to come together and sit at the table and get some things done? Because the time is now to stop playing. Stop with the egos, stop with all of this other stuff, and sit at the table together. The same way that these unions are coming together and sitting at the table, it's not just Pat Lynch. It's five, it's five Pat Lynch's out there. He's just, he just got one part of the union. They got four different unions in the Police Benevolence Association. They not playing. You understand? And then they got Mossad sitting down with them because they got officers in Israel and then they got the FBI because of the powers that they got granted in 9-11 they, they sit with the feds too look and I'm not I'm not saying that like we're going against them I'm not putting that out there as that I'm just showing you what unions are doing and the power of unions when they come together and the fact that inside of this circle that we all dwell within we have powerful unions. We have representatives. We have geniuses amongst us. We have strong brothers and sisters with fight in them. Yeah. But when they fight in each other and when they fight in ideas and all of this other stuff or they on YouTube uh, keyboard fighting, that's no fight. Ain't no power in that. Now, let me ask you this. 
you know, we speak on unity a lot, um, as that's the ultimate answer to the situation in black America. Um, my question to you, Red and the Blue, is why would, I unif why would I unify or why would I unite if I have a conscious organization? Let's say uh, we all know my stance on the powers of the mind, everything is mental, my spirituality, then, you know, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, how I feel about that. Why would I unite with, let's say, a brother that may believe and Allah is coming back to save them, or Jesus is coming back to save them. Or why would I unite with brothers who may say, you know, well, all we got to do is fill out this paperwork and um, change our status. And, you know, once we get rid of, you know, this black or Negro or colored thing, then, you know, and talk to these Europeans, they just waiting for us to, you know, state, state who we are. Why would, uh, the unity thing sounds good. But I need to know, why would I unite with somebody who don't share my same sentiments? Is it going to be, is it, is it, or, or those that, is, is it going to be genuine at the end of the day? I mean, are we going to unite under dysfunction? Or should we, should, should we, I mean, is it timely? I don't even know how to finish explaining this. But there's so many different philosophies. Why would I unite with somebody who thinks completely different from me? Okay. One of the underlying sentiments of all of these organizations, do they, this is a fact check, do they deal with the black man being a supreme being? Fact. Do they deal with the black woman being the supreme being? Fact. Do they deal with the black family being the supreme well, being? Uh, fact. Not all of them agree upon how to arrive at that point. Fact. But, right. the, but they do agree that we are not what they told us that we are. Fact. Indeed. They do have an agreement that we are living in a society with miseducation, misinformation, has wreaked havoc on our people to the point where the people perish for a lack of knowledge. Fact. Okay. Now, going back to what you said earlier about the power of belief and all is mental, what I'm saying is this. You could believe what you want to believe. You feel what I'm saying? You have every right within your heart and your mind to hold on to any belief that you feel and you deem works for you, especially if it has worked for you in the past. I have no right to take away something out of your, out of, from, from, from within you that lies within you that has empowered you and helped you fight this beast. Your tool belt. I can't pull your tool belt out and have your tights fall down. The stuff that you've been using inside of this matrix to fight this multi-headed, multi-pronged, multi-level beast, this hydra. I don't, I don't ever want to do that. What I do want to do is I want to be able to sit down with you and your organization in your organization, in your organization, and I want to be able to put plans on the table that don't interfere <clears throat> with your your doctrine, right? Because I under by, by 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 sitting down with somebody, you should have the ability to understand where they stand as an organization first and foremost. Don't just talk about unity and you don't understand where it is that you have differences, but where it is that you have similarities. So I'll sit down and I'll approach it from a similarity aspect. The Knicks look, sit down look, with yeah. the Lakers. They playing triangle def offense. Another person's playing another offense. But at the end of the day, we still part of the same team. Let's have a similarity seminar. You understand? Mm -hmm. What's up with a similarity seminar? Huh? You understand? Because a debate and other things of that nature deal with the differences, and we've had those, and everybody has come out for that. What's up with the similarity seminars? You understand what I'm saying? And then we get into the, and then we get into the, and then we get into the mind state of anything that we want to do starts in the mind and in the heart. And for anything to take place as a collective, there has to be a level of 
resonance amongst us. There has to be some kind of waves that are meeting each other, that are, that are, that are, that are, that are marrying each other, that are working. And you know what that comes with? You know when that happens? Whenever one of us steps in the building and we see our brothers from the Nation of Islam. Salam alaikum, my brother. We see our brothers from the Hebrew. Shalom, my brother. We see our brothers from the um, RBG community, Black Power. I'm not speaking for everybody. Islam. Everybody is. Everybody does not have that in their mission statement. Everybody is not sent here to do that sort of work. So I can't speak for everybody as if this is what they sent to do. We are living in a modern day mythology. You do have your sets and you do have your hey rules and you got your tahooties and your segments. Let's be clear. So all I'm saying is in order for anything to take place, in order for any of our ancestors to get busy and start working, we have to sit down at the table and allow them to work. They got to sit down and meet each other in the spiritual realm as well as we got to sit, sit down and meet each other in the physical realm. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. I haven't run into too many people in this community that I can't work with. You know what I'm saying? I haven't run into too many people in this community that are not willing to work with us. And we don't even bring up the quote-unquote differences, we get straight to the similarities. You know, we have a shared interest, and that's what we need to get to. And I also want to put on record that I know and understand, and for not one minute was I suggesting that I don't overstand that that particular shared effort can't be, you know, brought about or matched without the union of a melanated man and a melanated woman. You know what I'm saying? So we need to focus on that union that is the most sacred union. And when that particular unification happens, first and foremost, you know, these organizations in this particular year need to be introduced to the concept of the subconscious community, okay? And the subconscious community is now bringing in the whole aspect of we need more feminine representation. We need more women with their voice to come forth. We need to hear from the women. I don't want to be on tape anymore talking about what I think about women issues. You know what I'm saying? That's not my, not my, that's not my place to speak on. Because, peace, yeah. At the end of the day, say what's good to the family. Griff just finished doing his thing. No, I, I'm about to start, man. Okay. Peace was good, man. You understand what I'm saying? I just want to let y'all know, Sonetta, talking about he got this thing, man, that is the red pill, blue pill. Sonetta said he the black pill. Yo, Sonetta, get that up, man. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> the man dressed in black, the S1W, our brother, the Minister of Information, Professor Griff and Zaza Ali, the best combination on radio, that is the example of what I'm talking about. I want to say thank you to their last program. You know, um, I said some things on the last tape. I didn't get a chance to follow my thoughts all the way through. You feel me? And I was able to listen to a program because I got a lot of emails. I got phone calls and it was balanced. You know, people wanted to talk to me about the comments and I was able to talk to them. I read some comments, you know, I didn't respond to all of them because that wasn't a conversational tone. Those were people that felt a certain way and they went into attack mode, you know. I don't think that that's like any different from what it is that we're fighting against, you know what I'm saying? Because we should be able to talk as family and I will clarify my statements. So I heard a conversation on Brother Rich's program, of course, where, you know, the issue came up and as a unit, you know what I'm saying? We got a chance to hear from our brother and our sister, and Zaza Ali got to speak from her own personal experiences, all right? And those are the emails, and those are the phone calls that I'm getting, you know what I'm saying? And those are the somewhat of the issues that I want to bring to the table and bring to the family when it comes to somebody calling me and saying, you know, I'm looking at your information, I'm looking at your videos, I'm ready to contribute. I'm just coming into this information. I've been in two or three years. But when I was 18 and I was 19, you know, I had a situation where I had this child with this woman and she's quote unquote outside of my race. So what do we do with individuals that want to contribute in a situation such as this? You know, that's a conversation again that we need to have as a family. How are we going to approach going about 
bringing this information to our people and how are we supposedly supposed to quote unquote identify our people and that's not a judgment for me to make that's something that i want the community and the family to have a conversation in general all right so you know i just want to make that clear that i, I, I definitely overstand the importance of that unit right so this whole concept about the subconscious community the subconscious are where our thoughts actually get formulated all right and when we wake up and we're conscious again that's when those thoughts take form and we're able to now move upon the things that we were creating in the workshed of triple stages of darkness that dream state that's where the woman comes in she's having the dreams she's in contact with the spirit realm let's hear from her I know she, if, if there is a new idea on the planet, she got, she got it. Why are we not talking to her? Why are we not opening these forums of conversations to hear from mama? And as the conscious community, as a network of enlightened brothers and sisters and things of that nature that's working for the heart chakra, it's our duty and our job to reaffirm each other in the community. I'm supposed to be building my brothers up. I'm supposed to tell Rich how smart and how intelligent I think this brother is and how ahead, of, how, how ahead of the game that he is. I'm supposed to see my Hebrew Israelite brother and big him up. I'm supposed to see my Morris brother and big him up. I have to reaffirm the brothers and sisters inside of my circle so I can mentally build them up. We have to talk to each other's hearts. We have to repair and rebuild each other. We have to have, we have, to have our sisters feel beautiful again. You understand what I'm saying? We have to have our brothers feel strong again. This, this matrix that they coming out of, this world that they live in, they getting beat up on by these crackers. They getting beat up on by the knuckle draggers. They getting beat up on by society. Then they come on YouTube and on Facebook and on social media to come amongst the community and they get beat up by the community. That's why this shit is going the way that you see things going. It's not going in the right direction is because we can't be beating up on each other and destroying each other, weaponizing information and friendly firing each other and things of that nature. That's not how you create anything in the realm of creation. Am I right or wrong? It's just chaos at that moment. When you bring order, you bring love into the game. Why do you think all military armies, all military forces practice the art of capturing hearts and minds? That is military science, man. That is a political science to capture the hearts and minds of the people because that's the only realm, that's the only seat that you, that you, should, that you need to rule from. Yeah, yeah. That's the only places that you need to occupy in order to rule a society. So what are we doing inside of the conscious community to capture the hearts and minds, not only of the community, but of brothers and sisters outside of the community. Niggas is online bashing people because they Christians. You're bashing people because they, you know, they walk a certain way because they celebrate holidays. You're bashing people because they light skin. You're bashing people because they, they wigs are crooked. Like, we can't do that. And I'm taking, I'm, I'm not speaking to the family, I'm speaking to myself at the same time because I even have to check myself sometimes. I even have to step back and say to myself, am I emitting enough love? Am I emitting enough? Because sometimes the swords have to come out. You gotta, yeah, I'm, I'm Heru Kuti. So I'm gonna pull the swords out and deliver justice when it sees fit. But at the end of the day, understanding in the studies that, I, the studies that I'm doing, I'm understanding the power of the heart, how to, how to I'm, I'm, I'm understanding the law of resonance. I'm understanding all of these things and I'm understanding where it is that we're, where, where it is that we're falling and short on our work so that's all i'm saying if we give some love we're going to receive a lot more you know what i mean if we put ideas on the table and if we and if we if we could collectively agree on them and in our minds visualize ourselves in these certain towns that we want to live in in these certain sovereign lands that we want to live in in a global society yeah uh, uh be becoming global merchants the way that we were if we want to resurrect ourselves as a high empire like ancient kemet was like our brothers and sisters are bringing forth that information and salute to them then we have to collectively come together and do the work the work is not only going to be done by getting our hands dirty putting our hands in the dirt but it's going to start here and it's going to start here here. We need to heal. Bottom line, let's cut all of this other shit short and just get right to it. We need to heal. So we need a grand gathering of all of our brothers and sisters this year. 
when it's warm, of course. I don't want to go nowhere where it's cold. But we need a great, a great gathering of all of the brothers and sisters, the same way that we come together for Dance Africa, the same way that we come together for the Malcolm X Fest, the same way we come together for the um, International um, African Arts Festival. And niggas don't want to go home. They don't want to go home during those. It, it feels so good. Okay. Like Alton Maddox said, we need a revival week. You know what I'm saying? When the family used to go down south for the homecoming, when the family used to go down south to reaffirm their dedication to their family members, their family unit, what the family goal is, what the family legacy is, it's the same thing that we are suggesting that we do in this community. You know what I'm saying? We need to congregate and we need to have a common union. And I want to second something that the brother Polite said. You know, we need to focus on, on the brother Rez said about the unions. Brother Polite said, that whole aspect about a political party, that can be achieved through a union. So when they see one of us, they see 10,000 of us. If you put your hands on one of us, you're putting your hands on 50,000, 100,000, a million of us. And there's a consequences that are going to be meted out accordingly. Peace. All right. KTL Empowerment at Gmail, kingscounty.bigcartel.com. Know the Ledge Radio at Blog Talk Radio, Tuesdays and Fridays. Check us out. Check out our archives. We are up into our fifth year cycle, 500 plus episodes. Know the Ledge TV on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Support my brother Rich, Underground Railroad uh, Radio. Um, and just support everybody that's out there, you know what I'm saying, doing their thing. Send us any um, inquiries and things of that nature to the email, and we'll answer promptly. Peace and love iheartblackwoman.com, mypowerpieces.com, ocean14corp.com, and you can holler at me on Instagram at bluepillar44.com. We got a lecture coming up on the 23rd and 24th in Boston, all right, for our Boston family. We're going to be coming through. I'm going to be doing my epic monumental series, Win in Rome. Red Pillar is going to be doing the evolution will be digitized. And of course, I'm going to be getting into the Law 44, and I'm going to be starting that rollout for April 4th, 2015, when the third blood moon comes in, all right? And we take the motherfucking mask off these, uh, you know, the wizard, and show you exactly what's at play here with this uh, 44 algorithm. You dig? Peace.